mighty God we deserve for mighty all our dreams and all we have and earth for mighty God we deserve thank you Lord Jesus Amen, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We thank you this morning, Lord. Give you honor this day, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a mighty vision. What a mighty God we send. Angels of God, we know the name of God. Was mighty God, we sang. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Was mighty God, we did sang. Are we ever to? By the mighty God be Amen. Amen. You may be seated, my brothers and sisters. Amen. It's great to be in the house of God this morning in the new year, my brothers and sisters, the first Sunday, my brothers and sisters, to come and praise our God, my brothers and sisters, who never slumbers nor sleep, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says our Lord, my brothers and sisters, is in the midst, my brothers and sisters, of the throne of God, my brothers and sisters, interceding for us, my brothers and sisters. And I guarantee you, my brothers and sisters, when you pray unto him, my brothers and sisters, that prayer go unto him, my brothers and sisters. And he's fully aware, my brothers and sisters, what's going on in our lives, my brothers and sisters. He's fully aware. And I believe he's here this morning to fellowship with us. And there's a table prepared for us this morning, my brothers and sisters. And not an ordinary table, my brothers and sisters. Word for our season, my brothers and sisters. A word for our day, my brothers and sisters. Not for Noah's day, my brothers and sisters. Not for Lot's day, my brothers and sisters. Not for even Luther's day, my brothers and sisters. For our day, my brothers and sisters. Because we are the last generation, my brothers and sisters. And we're going to see all things before our eyes, my brothers and sisters. And we have to have a special word and a special, my brothers, a special portion of God's word in our assembly, my brothers and sisters. And we want to bless him and give him all honor this morning. I wonder if my brother Ashley can come and sing a song for the Lord. Amen. My sister Sharon can come after that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We join in the wonderful name of Jesus. For the glory of God, I'll sing a song. A thousand times I failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never read them. 
your glory goes beyond all fame. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the side out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Your will above all else, still my purpose remains. The heart of losing myself in bringing you praise. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries out, Lord. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the inside out, everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades, never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the Inside out, Lord, my soul cries out, out of love. Teach you are in the precious name of Jesus. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Watchless love and beauty in this world. Nothing in this world will satisfy Cause Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry 
who is like you, Lord, in all the earth. Match this love and beauty in this world. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrongs. You're the holder of my future days to come. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. So all my days on earth I will away. The moment that I see you face to face. Nothing on this earth will satisfy. Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven. To me, your presence is heaven to me. I wonder if my sister Jiva can come forward to sing a song. Our brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name. You may be feeling empty. You may think you're alone. You may be lost and drifting. But there is someone who really cares. Someone is knocking at the door. Someone is ringing the bell. Would you please answer the call and let him come in? Jesus is knocking at the door Jesus is ringing the bell would you please answer the call and let Jesus in you may be tired and lonely you may think you're an outcast you may be searching for an answer, 
but there is someone who really cares. Someone is knocking at the door. Someone is ringing the bell. Would you please answer the call and let him come in? Jesus is knocking at the door. Jesus is ringing the bell. Would you please answer the call and let Jesus in? Someone is knocking at the door. Someone is ringing. The bell, would you please answer the call and let him come in? Jesus is knocking at the door, Jesus is ringing the bell, would you please answer the call? And let Jesus sing. Would you please answer the call? And let Jesus sing. Amen. We just thank the Lord for those songs, my brother and sister. Truly, this morning, the Lord Jesus Christ is our focus this morning, my brother and sisters. His word this morning is our focus this morning. And we want to, my brethren and sisters, partake of this meal this morning and give him praise and honor this morning. Let's stand to our feet, my brethren and sisters. Amen. Amen. I want to brother Dion could just lead us in a chorus this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Be Amen. 
Amen. I want to greet you all in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. We are thankful once again that we can be in the house of God. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you, dear God, that we can have this opportunity, Lord, as a family and a body of Christ, my God. Lord, we can approach your great throne, my God, knowing, dear Lord, that you are ever faithful, my God, to answer all our cries, Lord. You see the hearts of every child here, dear God. You see the thoughts are far off, my God. Lord, I pray that you will touch each one of them, dear God. Lord, they have made a determined effort, Lord, to come into your presence, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will take your word, dear God. Be the Breaker of your word, my God. We remember those, Lord, Father, in foreign countries, my God. Lord, I pray that you'll bless your people. I pray that you'll minister to them as well, my God. We come at this service now in your hands. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning, my brothers and sisters. We thank the Lord that we can uh, look into his word. We can uh, switch that on. Uh, we started a message last week, brothers and sisters. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're using a new uh, camera. And uh, so there's uh, a lot to put in there. And uh, so there were some technical problems. So we're going to try and uh, go to a few scriptures this morning that we talked about uh, last week. And uh, then we'll follow it up with uh, what we're going to talk about this morning. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, on the 29th uh, of December, we realize the world has been uh, looking into the new year, what 2023 was going to bring on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, but the world did not know that brothers and sisters, God was going to shift gears in the Middle East. And yes, for the outside world, they cannot see what really is happening. But on the 29th of December, my brothers and sisters, uh, the Israeli parliament uh, sworn in a new government, brothers and sisters, uh, under the guidance of Netanyahu. My brothers and sisters, and uh, the world may have thought, well, my brothers and sisters, that this is going to be a repeat of how. Uh, the previous, uh, previous uh, I would say, five or six uh, governments were like. But my brothers and sisters, uh, since uh, this government has got in, we can see there is so many things that are happening. Uh, my brothers and sisters, that to my own mind, I am shocked of how these men that are now in that government are beginning to talk. Now, uh, we can't put all of there are excerpts out there of what little clips we can put on. But my brothers and sisters, uh, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that uh, God is beginning to anoint uh, that government for what is going to be uh, to fulfill what is in the scriptures. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, we have a message here, yeah, prelude of what's to come. Now, my brothers and sisters, we know the word prelude means, uh, brothers and sisters, looking into what is just in front of us. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, the world at large, brothers and sisters, do not have the faintest idea that uh, they're going to wake up one morning and they're going to see this world all a little different from what it was in the past. And I realize that uh, we've been looking into some of these scriptures uh, over the years, uh, and uh, maybe it has been taken lightly uh, by individuals. But I pray this morning that uh, I may be able to lay a few emphasis on certain points, that you may be able to see uh, why it is going to be important to look at this year 2023, uh, not just uh, from how the world is looking at it. The world is looking well. The coronavirus is over. The floods uh, came and went. Brothers and sisters, our water problem uh, 
is okay and I thank God for what God has done. But remember, brothers and sisters, a lot of these things uh, was to keep our hearts aflame for what God is going to do in the scriptures. Because, my brothers and sisters, the world uh, does not look at God's word uh, and uh, see what are you trying to point us to. So uh, we looked into the scriptures on uh, New Year's Eve. In Zechariah chapter 10 and verses 3, it says, Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds. Now, my brothers and sisters, God is not a God that is angry all the time. Brothers and sisters, our God is a loving God. But there are times, brothers and sisters, when man does not heed what he is talking then my brothers and sisters, uh, he will show uh, his anger. He said, my anger was kindled against the shepherds. And this is talking about the Jewish uh, leadership. The religious people of, I would say, uh, brothers and sisters, the old covenant period of time. The shepherds of that day. Brothers and sisters, God did a lot for the Jewish nation in taking them out of uh, Egypt. And for almost 1,400 years, uh, he moved them along. He gave David, he gave Solomon, he built the temple. But those shepherds or the leadership of that hour wanted to, uh, to be like the other Gentile nations. And that is why you read in Isaiah, in Jeremiah, and the minor prophets, uh, you have forsaken me, the fountain uh, of living waters. And you've hewed for yourself uh, broken cisterns. And my brothers and sisters, Gentile mankind uh, is doing the same thing. Brothers, God offered his son on Calvary. He paid the supreme price for us. Brothers, we were sinners. But look at mankind today. Brothers and sisters, uh, they have lost interest in the word of God. Brothers and sisters, they just have uh, a formality of religion. So. In that hour, God was against that religious uh, shepherds and he said, and I punish the goats. In other words, uh, he didn't punish the true shepherds, uh, but the rebellious shepherds, the goats. And how did he do that? Brothers and sisters, uh, he scattered them to the four corners of the earth. He burnt uh, the, the city of Jerusalem. Solomon's temple was burnt. And my brothers, uh, the people were taken into exile. But then you see this, um, brothers and sisters, pause, because it is a complete change of events. That is what God did. But then it says, uh, for the Lord of hosts had visited his flock, the house of Judah. That is two different lines of thoughts. One God was angry, he punished the goats, and then over a period of time, God let them do what they wanted to do, but he looked right down to our time, when God is going to reestablish the nation of Israel, and he says, uh, for the Lord of hosts had visited his flock, the house of Judah, and had made them as is goodly us in battle. Now, my brothers and sisters, so we see the two different lines of thoughts, how God, uh, brothers, was angry against uh, the shepherds, and he punished the goats, he burned the city, and brothers and sisters, uh, time uh, moved on, and right, I would say, in our generation of time, God was going to visit that House of Judah. It says, For the Lord of heaven's armies has arrived to look his flock. He will make them strong and glorious, like a proud war horse in battle. Or the translations say, He will look upon the house of Judah as a majestic horse. Brothers and sisters, uh, when we look at it at this moment of time, Brothers and sisters, prior to World War II, we know what happened. 
But God said he had visited the house of Judah. And my brothers, how did he do that? In Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 16, uh, he said he will send hunters and he will send brothers and sisters fishes. Fishes and hunters. He was beginning to visit the nation of Israel uh, after what they had done. And my brothers and sisters, uh, and he started slowly with the tribe of Judah so that they can become his majestic horse. That is a horse that would be fearless, a horse that will not be scared of cannon fire. And imagine, brothers and sisters, this week, the magazines, the main magazines, they began to write up, you know, how each nation performed. And my brothers and sisters, the first nation that they put on top is the United States of America. The second nation uh, is China when it comes to uh, military power. The third is Russia. And imagine, the little tiny nation of Israel is fought out of all the nations of the world. My brothers and sisters, uh, imagine that nation that is the size of Kwasulu Natal. Brothers and sisters can, uh, from their point of view, take on uh, Russia. So, brothers and sisters, uh, when the word of God said he will make Judah his majestic horse, soon uh, he will even prove uh, that that fourth uh, position uh, is not a fair when it takes on uh, Russia. Brothers and sisters, but nonetheless, God said that in his word. And when you think about uh, the best nation that you can go to and, and they give all maybe 100 and 200, Israel is number 10. My brothers and sisters, that lets us know what she was and what God brought her to today. So out of him came for the corner. That means in 1948, when God started the tribe of Judah, it was the beginning point. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, how many religious people in the world, or even natural people in the world, will pick up the Bible and turn the pages and say, well, you know what? I need to understand what this means. Out of him came the corner. Out of him came the nail. Out of him the battle bow. And out of him, every oppressor together. Now, my brothers and sisters, but God's spiritual understanding, out of him came the cornerstone in the building, the first stone that gives the dimensions. Uh, that's the beginning point. Brothers and sisters, uh, for when God is going to rechange uh, things for our time. And my brothers, since 1948, this is 2023. 75 years have passed. And in 75 years, she has grown progressively. And it says, uh, out of it came the nail. You use the nail to fix something. Brothers and sisters, she could not have been taken out of the land. Out of him, the battle bow, she's number four from a military might. Out of him, every oppressor together. I've spent a little time over the services of the different translations. Out of him, every oppressor together, because this word uh, is not the right translation. My brothers and sisters, so we see that the word of God says that out of him, every oppressor together. So, out of him, brothers and sisters, came the corner in 1948. Brothers and sisters, uh, Israel became a nation. This was put upon uh, I would say the paper of that time. And from this chart, we can follow that my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, 32, Behold the fig tree. Brothers, it was going to be a sign. In 1948, it became a nation. My brothers and sisters, God has started that nation and beginning point started. And my brothers and sisters, we're now living in 2023. Almost 75 years. Brothers and sisters, uh, the spotlight is beginning to return to this place. Brothers and sisters, uh, 
the Wailing Wall is the only piece of evidence that there was a, a previous temple on that Temple Mount. And so we see uh, the world today is looking at that place and uh, they don't understand what is going to be happening uh, in front of us, even in this place. We know that brothers and sisters in 67, a flag was put on that temple ground. So when we read this scripture, we must keep in our mind that this scripture has been fulfilled exactly the way it has been written. 20, 2,500 years ago, Zechariah wrote that. Out of him came the corner, the nail, the battle bow, and out of him every oppressor together. So why is this little scripture so important? This is the Jewish translation. You can see them. From them cometh the cornerstone and the ten peg. From them the bow for the battle. From them all the rulers together. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, that translation makes a big shift from all the oppressors together to all the rulers or the leadership or the governorship. My brothers and sisters, uh, for the first time, I would say in many, many years, Israel has now got a leadership. Brothers and sisters, this week that has passed, you saw when this man, the, the Minister of Security, Ben uh, Veal, brothers and sisters, uh, he went up the Temple Mount. He knew the perception of the world. They all felt that this man is going to go up there and he's going to walk on the Temple Mount and uh, he's surely going to pray. And when he prays, the world will explode because the only thing that they know in the lips from the United States of America to the world at large, the status quo. Everything you hear, keep the status quo. In other words, uh, you can do what you want to do, but don't change nothing. The mosque of Omar is the place for the Muslims to pray and to worship, but the Christians can go up there, but the Jews, they can go up there, but they must not move the lip. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, this man, he knew and he knows. Brothers and sisters, so uh, he did for this moment of time uh, the right thing, because he saw the international reaction of the world. And what happened, brothers and sisters, uh, immediately, the United Nations uh, called for a meeting, a meeting for nothing, because the next man in the governorship, brothers and sisters, uh, he went to the podium and he said, uh, so many things are happening in the world. Look at Iran killing innocent people. Brothers and sisters, women are being killed. There are atrocities throughout the world. And a minister of Israel who has the right to go up to the Temple Mount, he didn't pray, he didn't change the status quo. Brothers and sisters, uh, so what is the meeting for? He made them feel you have made yourself a laughing stock. And even, brothers and sisters, uh, the United States of America reprimanded Israel, but for what? My brothers and sisters, I'm saying this because I've listened to these different men that are now in the new government. Brothers and sisters, uh, they're like a lightning rod in the speech. Short, few words, but very electrifying. The new Minister of Defense, Brothers and sisters, uh, I think his name is Gallant. Brothers and sisters, he's already taken three uh, passports uh, of Palestinians. 
they held a security meeting and they are applying sanctions on the PLOs. And my brothers and sisters, uh, it seems like the world uses a phrase, casting caution to the wind. In other words, when you act a little reckless, it means that you're not going about things with caution. And they said this new government has, ca has cast caution to the wind. And my brothers and sisters, when I heard these things, it began to say, brothers and sisters, can we not see how this from them, all the rulers together, because these governors are talking with one voice. And my brothers and sisters, from the Minister of Defense, from the Minister of Security, from the Prime Minister, from the Minister to the UN, brothers and sisters, uh, all of them said, this man had a right to go on the Temple Mount. And so, brothers and sisters, that is why I have to say, the world had looked at the opening of 2023. They looked at it from different points. But we have to see something is happening. Uh, there's a fire building uh, in that Middle East. And my brothers and sisters, uh, what you saw them do uh, is definitely a restricted uh, amount of things. But down, they're going to do more. So brothers and sisters, uh, with that, we see that Netanyahu, brothers and sisters, uh, 75 years later, we have a new government now in Israel. Why is that very important? Because, brothers and sisters, uh, the new government there in Israel also runs a parallel to the ministry of this hour. Brothers and sisters, uh, they may not run, uh, I would say, uh, in the same uh, footstep as such, but we can set the parallel that if those men are talking that way, then we have to believe that the men in this hour will also get a cue from God of how they will establish certain things out of the scriptures. They will not be talking as it was in the past. Brothers and sisters, uh, they will know what they believe and what they stand for, immaterial to what the world has got to say, or religious man has got to say. They will know it is important to listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying at this hour. So we can see, brothers and sisters, this man also realizes that my brothers and sisters, this is now the sixth time that he's taken over the reins of the Israeli government. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he also is not mincing with his words. They held a security meeting there. Well, that was the Minister of Security as he was praying before the waiting wall. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we see that he walks upon that Temple Mount, despite the walkings. My brothers and sisters, the minister to the UN, he told to the people that were there, he said, my brothers and sisters, uh, the Wailing Wall is called the Western Wall many times. It's one of the, I would say, uh, main evidence to the world that brothers and sisters, there were two temples prior to this. He said, how come? that my brothers and sisters, uh, people can go and pray at the Wailing Wall. And if you just look west to the Wailing Wall, is the Mosque of Omar. And historical, the historical wise, brothers and sisters, uh, there were two prior temples on that mountaintop. And you say that the Jews cannot pray on that top of that mountain. Brothers and sisters, uh, he said, uh, that's very absurd for the world to think that way. But in a short while, that will be corrected. Brothers and sisters, uh, whatever that meant, God knows, and we know from the scriptures, it is going to be corrected. But brothers and sisters, so 
I, I pray that we keep our eyes on, on these events because uh, it's very important. This is Minister Yarev Levin. He is the new Minister of Defense. My brothers and sisters, uh, I'm not into politics, but brothers and sisters, uh, when you get a Minister of Defense, a new Minister of Defense, brothers and sisters, and then uh, they start changing the, the, the judi judiciary that whereby they can change uh, laws and regulations. The brothers and sisters that the members of parliament, if they can get 61 votes, they can change a law. That is now the new concept in the House of Israel. And so some of the prior laws that were there, that were very, I would say, lenient uh, to the left, is all going to be changed to move to the right. So you can think what they will do, brothers and sisters, uh, when they want to change a law. So brothers and sisters, uh, there's, that is why the world, the government is scared. Because there's a government there who's got about 65 MPs. And if they want to change the law, as long as they get 61, they change the law. And my brothers and sisters, and if they want to say, we're going to change the law in time that the Jews can go and pray on the mountaintop, they can do that. And nobody can say anything. Brothers and sisters, but it will cause world confusion. So I'm just saying you, how are these men in the leadership, their mind is thinking. Gilad, you have been, this is the man in the UN. Brothers and sisters, you can see how he's talking there. He said it's absurd, brothers and sisters, for you to think that you made everybody to come to the UN. And my brothers and sisters, nothing took place. And so, brothers and sisters, that was for the whole world to see. When it all was done, Mama the bus is come on the scene now. And brothers and sisters, he said they're breaking all the rules, all the regulations, and they're changing everything. Brothers and sisters, that is why I have to say, when you look at 2023 from the Middle East point of view, that what we saw happen this week is a preload of what is going to happen just down the road. Because if they are acting that way now, then how are they going to act in front of us? Because from the Prime Minister right down to all of these other men, they are all speaking in a certain way. And my brothers and sisters, so we leave that there and we look at Mika now, brothers and sisters, some 2,800 years. My brothers and sisters, he was a minor prophet. And in Micah chapter 7, verses 7, we see the Holy Spirit is in the hearts of the Jewish nation. And my brothers is looking right down in our time. And uh, brothers and sisters, uh, he has felt how the Jewish nation, brothers and sisters, went through so much of persecution, so much of problems, and the Spirit of God is praying through them. And they are saying, therefore, I will look unto the Lord. In other words, with all the pressure that is coming, brothers and sisters, even in bygone days, the Jewish people, their hearts began to turn towards the Lord and said, I will wait for the God of my salvation. Brothers and sisters, even in our lives, at this beginning of 2023, with all the pressures that have come our way, we, in our hearts, need to be able to look the same way that the Jewish nation looked. They don't have to look to man. We don't have to look to man. They looked to the Lord. What do they look for? For, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Brothers and sisters, sir, if we look at the history of the Jewish nation 
and see after so many thousands of years and since 1948 how Israel now is being heard by God. Brothers and sisters, in the same way in our life, no matter what we've gone through, what the trials, the tests, the problems of our life has been, look to the Lord and wait for the Lord's salvation. For the Bible says, my God will hear me. Brothers and sisters, uh, there is no other hope. You can try, brothers and sisters, uh, many times, uh, even uh, in our sickness, uh, in our problems, uh, it seems like the world doesn't have any good advice to give. But if we would trust the Lord, we would turn to the Lord. God, the same way that he's hearing the nation of Israel, is going to hear us. So we see Micah spoke this many years ago. He said, I will look to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Jewish nation, they still have blinkers on their eyes. Their eyes have not been opened to know who the Messiah is, I would say. But nonetheless, pressure is causing them to look towards the Lord. The Word of God says, again, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. That's Micah chapter 7, verses 8. Brothers and sisters, as Mama the Bus is now looking to the world, brothers and sisters, telling the world, the United Nations, uh, the U.S., brothers and sisters, look at what they're doing to us. But brothers and sisters, slowly, the Palestinians and the surrounding nations are becoming the enemy, brothers and sisters, of the little nation Israel. And the people within there, brothers and sisters, uh, these scriptures are actually, I would say, voicing what is in their heart. Said, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. Brothers and sisters, uh, after the backdrop of what we read in Zechariah, that God was angry against uh, Israel. And my brothers, he punished the goats. Uh, he scattered them to the four corners of the earth. For 2,000 years, they laid uh, in exile. But now they're realizing that God, brothers and sisters, uh, he said in his word that when I fall, I shall rise. Brothers and sisters, even in our natural walk of life, no matter how many times you have fallen, how many times the devil says you will never rise again? You will never walk on your feet again? That is only the lie of the devil. Brothers and sisters, uh, how many years have passed uh, from the time we became a child of God? But still by his grace, uh, we fell and we woke up again. Because Jesus paid the price. He shed his blood. And my brothers and sisters, his presence uh, is still able to rise us. So just as uh, the world looks, brothers and sisters, and say the nation of Israel will never rise, but the world is stating she's the fourth military power. She's the tenth uh, best nation in the world. So when I fall, I shall rise. That is, brothers and sisters, what a voice is saying. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Brothers and sisters, we know that for almost 2,000 years, they were scattered to the four corners of the earth. There was no spiritual light to the nation of Israel. The same, brothers and sisters, uh, to you and I, brothers, the Gentile church world, as light went away from the Gentile church world, and as she went into darkness, my brothers and sisters, God had a plan, brothers and sisters, that he will restore light back to the church. So when the word of God says here, yeah, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. So on both fronts, brothers and sisters, God has done that. In the dark ages, brothers and sisters, man didn't know. Is the church ever going to come out of the dark ages? 
My brothers and sisters, God had already written in his word that my brothers and sisters, step by step, he would allow men would restore truth to the church and further light will come to the church. And my brothers, right in this hour of time, yes, it's the evening time, but God will restore more and more light. Brothers and sisters, since Brother Jackson passed away, it's close to now going in a yet time to 20 years since I would say his passing away. We cannot believe, brothers and sisters, uh, that God has not given more light to the church. Brothers and sisters, uh, if God has restored the nation of Israel, and if you go back in time 20 years, see what the nation of Israel has progressed, how much more to the church of the living God. That is why the Bible does say, brothers and sisters, by the time that seven seal is broken, there's going to be sevenfold light to the church. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we said this uh, last week, but I'll say this again. God has told us, brothers and sisters, in his word, that new wine must be put into new wine skins. And when you look at that parable, you think, well, the new wine is an uh, intoxicating drink. Yes, the illustration is that. But what is the new wine to the church of the living God? New wine uh, is uh, new revelation. Brothers and sisters, because even Brother Branham said that new truth or new revelation stimulates the bride. And that is why the scripture said, see that you hurt not the oil and the wine. And so uh, new wine cannot be put in a bottle that cannot expand. And you cannot take a new truth and give it to one of these denominations uh, in the world uh, that are so starchy that they cannot stretch. If you put it in there, it will burst, as Jesus said. But new wine must be put into new bottles or new wineskins that can expand. And if God gives new light to you and you have the Holy Ghost in you, uh, you will accommodate the new truth that God is giving. So that is why, brothers and sisters, uh, the two days revelation uh, is not we're living in the third day or we don't know what it is. It is what the scriptures have opened up. It's the Gentile church ages. And if you are a new wineskin believer, you will expand a little and you will see the new truth and it will bring a joy to your soul. God intends to go further. You will see that there is more than just Malachi 4.5. You will see that there are three watches in which God gave more truth and you'll expand a little further. You're not going to burst because God will accommodate that. So new wine will stimulate your, your heart and your spirit will be able to accept new light God gives to the church. So brothers and sisters, uh, when he says, uh, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Brothers and sisters, the Jewish nation knows what a dark hour it was. Leave alone the rest. What the gas chambers was like. When Hitler, brothers and sisters, persecuted the church, persecuted the Jewish nation. Brothers, little children were burned. Older people were burned. They were in darkness. But what was the purpose? It was to send them to the land of Israel. It was to show them that there's a purpose in all of this. He will send the fishes and he will send the hunters. And my brothers and sisters, now that they came back into the land, they were not to be happy with what the United Nations just gave them because the Holy Spirit said, as far as your eyes can see, brothers and sisters, God will give you all that land. So brothers and sisters, uh, we see Mika talking about this. So the Jewish nation, as the prophet speaks, I will bear the indignation of the Lord. In other words, when God said that he has punished the goats, brothers, they were to be out of the land for a certain period of time. 
the Jewish nation, that allocated people, they've come to an understanding. We understand why this has happened to us. That's why the word of God says, they will say, we will bear our indignation because I've sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. Now, my brothers and sisters, these scriptures are at our front door because the more the Gentile powers try to speak evil of the nation of Israel, they don't realize that judgment is sooner or later coming their way. God says, I will execute my ju judgment for me. And he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Brothers and sisters, in this little scripture is what we can say. Brothers and sisters, many things that are involved. We see that, brothers and sisters, prior to this, they bore the indignation. Then he brought them back into the land. And my brothers and sisters, uh, just in front of us, God is going to execute judgment over the Gentile world. And then, brothers and sisters, uh, there's going to be an element of people that God is going to slowly beginning to show that he's working on the, on the side. And then their eyes are going to open. And my brothers and sisters, he's going to bring them to the light and he is going to show forth righteousness to them. So it's important to see, brothers and sisters, what is this? After that miraculous war, brothers and sisters, uh, he said he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Um, we can turn in the book of uh, Revelation. This is not there. Chapter 14. Once that miraculous war is over, and Ezekiel 38 and 39 transpires, and we are at Daniel's 70th week, brothers, the two prophets will come to Israel, because this scripture said, He will bring me forth to the light. Imagine, we've been given the opportunity to come to the light. When we came to understand what Jesus did for us, and we saw uh, who is our Savior. But the Jewish nation has not yet been brought uh, to the understanding who is the Messiah. But so there has to be this war taking place and judgment. And then it says, he shall bring me to the light. And I shall be all his righteousness. Brothers, we know that we receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ through the shed blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. But the Jewish nation, they have been still trying to make their own righteousness by washing pots, keeping the laws. But when the two prophets come on the scene, brothers, they're going to say, you missed it. The Lamb of God came, Jesus Christ, and he is the righteousness. And their eyes are going to open. And that's why you're now reading in Revelation chapter 14 after they are sealed by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. Others, there is not going to be any physical small lamb standing on Mount Zion. But the presence of God in these 144,000, they're going to know who the true lamb of God is. Stood on the Mount Zion, and with him, 144, Thousand, having his father's name written in the forehead. Brothers, the world says, knowing the one God revelation and knowing the name of the father is not important. But yet the Bible says this 144,000, they're going to know, brothers and sisters, uh, who the father's name is or the, the that they're going to know, brothers and sisters, this land that they are following. His father's name was Jesus. 
they're going to come to that understanding. Brothers and sisters, so uh, what God has shown to us is going to show the same revelation to this 144,000. That is why they're going to recognize, brothers and sisters, uh, that Jesus Christ was the true Messiah. Yes, his name was Jesus. But they're also going to know, brothers, that name Jesus uh, belonged uh, to their heavenly father. So those two prophets un unravel all this understanding to them. So the 144,000 are men that are going to be used to preach the everlasting gospel in the tribulation period to the four corners of the earth. But they are not the only people that are going to be saved. Because if you turn to Revelation 12, verses 14, it says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. So you got the 144,000 that is going to get the revelation of the one God and who is the, the father of Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, the woman is going to be made of the nation of Israel or Jewish people, of men, women, children, even babies, brothers and sisters that will be carried over to the place which we know is going to be North America. How do they know to go there? The Bible says they were carried with two wings of a great eagle. We know that eagles point to a prophet. And the two wings points to the two prophets, Moses and Elijah, that will speak to them where they need to go and hide during the tribulation period. So I'll just give you the two scriptures uh, for you to see when. Micah said here, he will bring me forth to the light. What light is he going to bring the Jewish nation? They're going to come to know who the true Messiah is. They're going to come to know, brothers and sisters, uh, where they need to flee. And they're going to come to know we don't need to keep the Ten Commandments anymore and wash pots and pans. Uh, we receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ because his blood was shed. That's why the Bible says there, and a fountain shall be opened for the Jewish nation. That is why you see right here, condensed. How many things are there? I'll bear my indignation. They will bear, brothers, the punishment for forsaking the law. Because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause, he is about to start to plead the cause. And execute judgment for me. And then when those wars are over, Brothers, the 70th week of Daniel, light is going to come and strike the 144,000 and the women of Israel. Imagine we have been privileged to have light, not denominational light, not just Luther's light and Wesley's light and Pentecost light or Brother Branmore, even to Brother Jackson, but the full light of God's word all together. Imagine, brothers and sisters, how are they going to rejoice uh, in that last half of Daniel's 78th week when they have been brought to the light? And if we have been brought to the light now, how should we rejoice for what God has given us? Brothers and sisters, remember, the Jewish people have been given scriptures. Uh, the denominational world will never touch what that means. Just like they won't touch Zechariah 14.7, uh, at evening time it shall be light. Ask them what it means that there shall be a day that shall be neither night or day, but at evening time it shall be light. None of them opened that scripture. It was Brother Branham that opened that scripture. And my brothers and sisters said uh, that was for our time. But we are saying the prelude of what is to come for the Jewish nation. Brothers and sisters, they are born the indignation. But in front of us, brothers and sisters, that leadership is already getting ready. Brothers and sisters, to speak with one voice. And if that leadership is getting ready, then what about the ministry whose light has come all already? 
the Jewish nation is moving towards the light. Light has come our way. And my brothers and sisters are saying, no, you can't stretch the wine skin. The wine skin of God should have elasticity to it to receive more truth. Brothers and sisters, you cannot restrict it. For the word of God said, hurt not the oil and the wine. Not erroneous truth, but revelated truth. Because it is the stimulation of revelation. So brothers and sisters, uh, God is getting ready for the Jewish nation. And light is going to be brought to them in time. So we can say, brothers and sisters, we're living in this hour. This government of Israel is getting ready. And no doubt, some of the things they are going to say is going to be the very catalyst to irritate the Gentile nations. Brothers and sisters, to make them do things, they'll say, you know, they're breaking the status quo. Brothers and sisters, how long more is the Gentile world going to say to the rightful owners of the Temple Mount that they cannot pray in what they own? Brothers, that belongs to them. David paid for it in cash. It is only, I would say, uh, a, a good manners on their part to say, okay, we'll just go along. But God, when he gets sick and tired, his anointing is going to fall on that leadership. And when that word of God says the governors are going to be a torch of fire in the midst of shield, brothers, already, if I had the opportunity of taking the different video clips, you will see how these people are speaking. Brothers and sisters, you had an aerial Sharon of bygone days. You had a bulldog Shamir. But it seems like these men are going a little more than that. And my brothers and sisters, the word of God says further, when God's beginning to do this, it says, then she that is mine enemy shall see it. Brothers, the world is going to see it. The PLO is going to see it. The Arab nations around are going to see it. Even Gentile worlds. And shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Brothers and sisters, when they're going to see what is going to take place in that era of the miraculous, mine eyes shall be older. Now shall she, now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the street. Brothers, Micah is seeing this in visionary form. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. Brothers and sisters, Ben Vir walked up there, but if I can read his heart and his legs, his movement, Brothers and sisters, he wants to recite a prayer as anything. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us, in that day that thy walls, not just walls of defense because it will be useless now, it's the temple walls. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. In other words, all that was against Israel, whatever God said, God is going to wipe it out. And out, out of condemnation and curse, God's blessings are going to come on that. And in a similar way, when God's going to do that, he's going to bless the house of God, the church of the living God, the body of Christ. And my brothers and sisters, we know when he, when, when he does that, all of these scriptures and much more is going to be fulfilled. Brothers, the surrounding nations are going to come against Israel. God is going to show himself by a pillar of fire. And the angels are going to put themselves on display. And my brothers and sisters, Israel, that today, maybe the fourth military-wise, is going to shift gears, brothers, because Michael is going to take over. Which nation in China or the United States or Russia got a leading archangel? To be the commander in general. 
Brothers and sisters, it's going to change over. So we have to believe, brothers and sisters, this miraculous wise in front of us is going to lead to this temple being built. And brothers, finally, Ezekiel 38 and 39, where we know God will deal with Russia. And my brothers and sisters there on the mountaintops of Israel. Brothers, once that era of the miraculous takes place, a temple is going to be put together. The parallel of that will shift from what we've been talking about, uh, the leadership, because the body of Christ, every child in the body of Christ, has to be, I would say, fit, fitted into that habitation of God. Just as the temple is going to be ready, the body of Christ has got to be ready. That is why across the world, brothers and sisters, uh, each man can't believe what he wants to believe and say, well, we'll all want to come and sit together. You've got to be fitly fitted together, compacted. Your vision in the scripture has got to be the same. Because, brothers and sisters, this third temple that's going to be built is not a haphazard natural temple. Jesus Christ is going to sit in the third temple, the Son of God. And brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit will have to come into the body of Christ and His Spirit will have to find residence in every soul, in every believer. That is the parallel that you have to see. And my brothers and sisters, then God is going to call people from all of the world for, for the Jewish nation. In that day also shall he, he shall come even to thee from Assyria and from the fortified cities and from the fortresses, even to the river and from sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. That is, brothers, those that stayed there prior. He thy people with the rod and the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel, let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. Brothers, we're going to be here to see how Israel will extend their boundary lines. And brothers and sisters, the people of Jordan are going to come under rulership of Israel. Gilead is on the other side of Jordan, uh, the other side of the river Jordan, that's in Jordan, brothers and sisters. So God's people are going to feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of David and Solomon and the rest. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. Brothers, the world at large are trying to squeeze now this new I would say, Fed's, Fedsling government, brothers and sisters, but this government, as soon as the, sh the gunshot was shot, it opened up full. They never expected it. They thought Netanyahu will cower under all these great people, but he didn't. Brothers and sisters, he kept the reins, he allowed these men to do what they have to do. I have to believe, brothers and sisters, in the ensuing months, we're going to see, brothers and sisters, how this is going to cause these scriptures to come into fulfillment. And it's going to lead to that era of the miraculous. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might, and they shall lay their hand upon the mouth, and their ears shall be deaf. Brothers from Europe, to the United States of America, to Iran, brothers to all these other Arab nations around, they're all going to put their fingers in their ears, or it's going to become deaf. They're going to put their hands on the mouth. And they say, we've never seen it on this wise. Brothers and sisters, imagine, since Brother Branham's days, Brother Jackson's days, the these wonderful men of God, they pointed the church of the living God forward. They pointed them to the revelation of God's word. 
God opened what was necessary for their hour and is still opening today. Why? He wants the church to have wine of his way. And that is why, brothers and sisters, uh, God opened up Hosea 1.10, Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, the church ages, showed what that was. Luke chapter, brothers and sisters, 12, that there would be three watches. God opened up Luke chapter 19, verses 15, brothers and sisters, when he shall return from the wedding. I wonder why none of the individuals that have not moved on from these different stages don't open Luke chapter 19 verses 15 and tell me what does it mean when he shall return from the wedding. Brothers and sisters, when shall that happen? You can't put that in the millennium. You can't put that in heaven. It happens down here because nobody is being thrown from heaven. That man that has folded the napkin and said, Lord, here is your pound. He doesn't throw it from heaven. That alone should let us know God gave more truth further to Brother Jackson and Brother Branham. No, not great and marvelous, wonderful, I would say, things that you have to boast about, but things of stimulation. Because God said, Had not the oil and the wine. And my brothers, if you keep an humble attitude and you are thankful, you'll rejoice in your heart because uh, for what the nation of Israel has gone through, that government, that leadership is going to be anointed and they're going to be scared. How can these men go in the United Nations and speak the way they're speaking? How can the Minister of Defense say what he's saying? Brothers and sisters, I remember Brother Jackson. I sat in his vehicle. We were going to an eating place. He said, Brother Governor, he said, it was not a dream. He said, I was right, taken right there. And he said, I heard the voices speak. And he said, how the men in the leadership said, I had a dream last night that we were anticipating a war. And God is going to take charge of it. Brothers and sisters, uh, I have to believe at the moment, yes, these are politicians. We may not see them saying, well, we are religious people. But when God anoints, he's going to change the picture. And for what I've seen this week is enough to tell me, brothers and sisters, they're going to become a, a torch of fire in the midst of sheaves. And in the same way, God will anoint the church of the living God and the bride of Jesus Christ in the ensuing days and months in front of us. And we'll know what the scripture means because it's going to anoint the church of the living God. Thy watchmen shall lift up their voice. With a voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. So brothers, how can you say that the church of the living God will not see eye to eye and talk about what's happening in Israel. If Zion is going to be brought back, when are you expecting that? 100 years from now? 50 years from now? Brothers and sisters, Jesus said, when those individuals, that generation, sees the fig tree bud, brothers and sisters, we are the generation. And so we know, brothers and sisters, when Zion is going to be brought back, the ministry also will be unified. And that scripture that I read, out of it shall come the nail, the corner, the battle bow, and every ruler together means they will have a unified leadership. And so, brothers and sisters, we can thank God that that is what is in front of us. So we can say a prelude of what is to come. That is not everything, but a little of what the prelude that is in front of us. Let's stand to our feet today. Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people to live at this hour of time, Lord. Father, as much as there's many things happening on the face of the earth, but our eyes and our minds are looking at the Middle East situation, 
Lord, I pray that you'll bless the governors there. And likewise, bless the ministry across the land. And bless the people as well, my God. The body of Christ. Lord, they've gone through a lot, my Father. Father, many of them many times have felt that they could throw the towel in. But I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen them, anoint them, and lift their hearts, my God. Let them know, my God, that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, may your presence be with them now as they go the different ways, Lord. I pray that you will be with them, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you this morning. Amen. Let's sing a song to the Lord.